Is the U.S. and other nations hiding a secret space-faring fleet? Are there secret bases on the moon and Mars that have been there for decades? Join us today as the jackalopes go down the jackalope hole of Solar Warden. I'm Floyd Whiting. I'm Aaron Linden. I'm Steve Sisson. <laughs> <laughs> we have a substitute producer who's a little behind the ball here. <laughs> and Proby. And I'm Proby. <laughs> Proby is sitting in for Emmy Whiting, who couldn't be here today. But I want to start this by saying this is a conspiracy theory that I kind of stumbled on. It has been around for years. There's been novels written about this, but I'd never heard of it. Until we started looking into information concerning CERN. And then all of a sudden, holy cow, this thing kind of opened up. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. Because it is a conspiracy theory that if you are a, a Jackalope viewer, I've talked about a lot. Um, not thinking that I was a genius or anything. I knew there was information out there. But this uh, conspiracy theory really brings down... Uh, certain conspiracy theories that I've I've had for years. <clears throat> now, it's called Solar War. Some believe that since the 1980s, a secret space program codenamed Solar Warden has been operating within our own solar system. Through reverse engineering of the crashed UFOs that were recovered in Roswell and other locations, supposedly the U.S. government formed an alliance with multiple countries and possibly extraterrestrial beings, and has built a fleet of eight aircraft carrier-sized vessels. This fleet also has 43 smaller fighter-type craft to patrol and secure our solar system from outside threats. The theory also includes a permanent and manned base on the Moon and Mars, it also says that we have visited every planet in our solar system except Mercury due to its temperature. This theory really began when a world-known hacker recovered one document. To understand Solar Warden, you have to understand Gary McKinnon. This guy was a systems administrator from Scotland. He was a hacker. Who, accu who was accused in 2002 of perpetrating, quote, the biggest military computer hack of all time. Now, although McKinnon himself states that he was really looking for evidence of free energy suppression and trying to cover up uh, UFO activity and other technologies potentially useful to the public, it is said that McKinnon found a document listing the transfers of non-terrestrial officers among the fleet of vessels belonging to Operation Solar Warden. Now, I've looked into this guy. I, uh, like I said, you got to know McKinnon to understand where did this whole theory come from. And he got into the U.S. systems with a program that he developed, and he searched through the U.S. government computers for supposedly over a year, this program was able to go in there and deep dive into everything that we thought was secure for a year. It's it's incredible. Well, my, um, <clears throat> if I can interrupt you real yeah, quick, yeah, my, my favorite part of that is, you know how he got in to a lot of the computers? He searched for the computers that had either no password or the password was password. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is got that, into over how, 97 yeah. of them. Like, ooh, that's secure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. That, and but, he left messages too, yeah. basically telling them just that. Like, your guys' security is crap. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's that's probably typical. I mean, we've seen reports of like how often the password is password. Right. And it's uh, surprisingly and shockingly common. Well, it was over 97 military and NASA computers that either didn't have a password or the password was password. And I'm like, <laughs> what in the hell? <laughs> and I mean, the scary thing is number one, this is McKinnon. He did this back in 2002. Now, uh, McKinnon supposedly is on the spectrum, so right. a gifted individual, more than likely, you know, uh, more patience and, and determination than, than the majority of us. So having that ability to work with numbers and computers, now think about AI. 
Now oh, think man. about what you can actually tell AI to do. So folks at home and uh, anyone else listening, do not use the word password <laughs> right, <laughs> as your password. <clears throat> and if you take nothing else from this. Episode. Man, <laughs> like, but I mean, think about that. He, that's what got him in. And then he was in there for a year yeah. before they realized, I think someone's in our system. And supposedly he was sitting in front of his computer uh, exploring like uh, Pentagon or NASA, someone's documents. And he saw the mouse move and it wasn't him that moved it. So he's like, okay, they got me. He knew. And so he knew right then and there. He's like, they have found me. So he pulled out. But before he did, he left another horrible message basically saying, you guys, the security's crap, bye, you know, <laughs> right? So the U.S. went after him. But because of his uh, Asperger's, they decided, the U.K. decided, we're not going to extradite this guy. Right. Um, and a lot of people feel that another reason they didn't really pursue him to the ends of the earth, say like Julian. Right. Edward Snowden. Mm-hmm. Is because he knew things. <clears throat> yeah. And he was going to testify to those things under oath. And it's much better if we just all forget about this guy. <laughs> or just say, you know, oh, a tinfoil wat, hat wearing conspiracy guy. He's but, a wacko. We're just going to leave him alone. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, you've got people who got no business looking at this stuff, looking at this stuff because it's now evidence. Right. So even if you're just, say, like one of those computer forensics investigators and you got to sit down and basically kind of track, well, what did this guy really steal so that we can charge him? Well, now you're looking at documents that are way above your pay grade and you don't want people knowing about that. So really take a step back and think, unless you're in the computer hacking world, unless you really know your programmers and, and things like that, who the hell has ever heard of McKinnon? Mm, yeah. Right. Nobody. Yeah. Right. Like he's not in the zeitgeist out there like Julian Assange, who, right. who, you know, basically took all these government documents and then put them up for everyone to see. This guy didn't do that. He just basically did what he did, got caught. And the government was like, hey, you know, that's I think they figured it would be somewhere around 70 to 80 years in prison. 70 years and two million dollar fine. Yeah. And they. uh I think they accumulated, what, $800,000 in damages. That's what they said, yeah. That he had actually caused while he was in there. That's not a whole lot of money. No, no, not, um, when, not when we get into some of the things that we'll get into. Did and, they and, hire him afterwards? Did they, like, hey, that, they here's, should, here's I, your I, job. If you want the truth, at the time, uh, uh, I can't, Theresa May? Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. The, the Prime Minister of Britain at the time basically said i'm not going to extradite him right and i think you know that's it that is odd as well in my opinion that's odd usually britain's like yeah you want him here you go you know right. he's been on a boat for a half hour before <laughs> he called or, or whatever this time they were like nah we're gonna keep him here and uh and and he's just gonna kind of relax and we're all gonna forget that this guy did what he did and it seems like everybody was cool with that that's odd to me that is weird that's mm -hmm. odd mm -hmm. now uh, much of the documents that he found were extremely mundane. And if you've ever worked for the government at any level, there's documents that track everything. So a lot of this stuff, it, it didn't even matter. But what did he find that really kicked this off? Well, he found the list of extraterrestrial or not extraterrestrial. Let me let me back up. Uh, non terrestrial non officers, meaning our officers in space and how they were transferred between these eight vessels that are supposedly up there. So he found that. Supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> and he also uh, uh, found some documents uh, that gave descriptions of the cigar-shaped mother craft. And that each one of these is like over 200 yards long. Yeah, they're huge. Huge. Humongous vessels. And we've got eight. Supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> now, who mans these vessels, right? These are huge vessels. How many people are on an aircraft carrier? Holy crap. I oh, mean, man. that's thousands of individuals, uh, U.S. servicemen and women, are, are on U.S. aircraft carriers right now. 
So the program, supposedly manned by Black Operation contractors, supposedly, supposedly <laughs> uh, Black Operation contractors and contributions. That's all it says is contributions from Canada, Russia, mm -hmm. the UK, Italy, and Australia, with command and control being operated out of a few secret bases, i.e., Groom Lake. Uh, you know, all the secret locations that aren't really too secret. Right. Now, what's, what's the evidence for this kind of thing? You know, this is pretty outrageous stuff. Well, former President Ronald Reagan uh, began his strategic defense initiative, codenamed Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You guys remember that? Yes. I remember that when I was a little kid. Yes. I went back and watched all the videos no, just I because it's it. intriguing it as really hell. Is. Now, what is the public perception of that so and and correct me if i'm wrong because you have updated yourself on this and, and i'm kind of pulling from a 40 year old memory here so let's look at what was star wars to the russians what did we want them to think missile defense lasers yeah, exactly yeah we, we could shoot yep. uh, a nuclear weapon out of the air no problem right mm -hmm. we're no longer worried about you so see uh, iron dome of the world right, essentially yes. right right now what was it really? Something that could never get off the ground. But Ronald Reagan put forward that it was off the ground and operational. So, you know, so the Russians took that as, well, if this thing's operational, we don't have a freaking chance. That is a government tactic. It is something that's actually really smart because now you're going to dump a bunch of your resources and manpower mm -hmm. into something, into a, a red herring, right? Mm -hmm. So... It, let's have them spend that money and that time chasing that down. And we didn't have to spend any money. Nothing. We just said we did it. Yeah, yep, that's right. right. And we had, a, and I do believe we had like computer engineers and designers back here, drop schematics, like all of it. We, we had this stuff on paper so that if anyone ever leaked it out, kind of like we're always talking about the Mirage men, right? Release a little bit, let the spy get just a little bit of this. And yep. they, that way they can look at it and be like, see, it's real. I stole this out of someone's desk and holy cow, this is a the, real the, thing. The little camera, the yes. little right, spy, right. The little cool <laughs> but spy camera. But now you're taking it back yep. and the whole thing is BS. It's all crap. It's, it doesn't really exist. Or is it? <laughs> but here, here's, here's the deal. Was there really something more to that? Like, that's the story that we all learn once the curtain fell, right? Now we get it. Okay, yeah, we were kind of pulling a red herring on the Russian government. Everyone walks away. What if there really was something to Star Wars, but it had nothing to do with what we thought? It was a red herring for a red herring. Mm. This program Double red herring. Yeah. was designed to deter possible alien threats. The rest of us believed it was a hoax. It wasn't. Published in 2007, Ronald Reagan's journals, uh, mm. and it's not really written with a narrative. Uh, it's literally just uh, President Reagan sitting down, jotting his thoughts for the day. On June 11th, 1985, he states, quote, lunch was with five top space scientists. It was fascinating. Space truly is the last frontier and some of the developments there in astronomy and etc. are like science fiction, except they are real. I learned that our shuttle capacity is such we could orbit 300 people. This is 1985. Unquote, excuse me. This is 1985. Right. Ronald Reagan wrote this in 85. So if we say the program just got off the ground, Scientists, I'm sitting down. I'm Ronald Reagan. What are, what could we do? Oh, well, we can do this, that, and the other. We can put 300 people in a ship right now. Let's say you are Ronald Reagan, and all I'm looking for is a thumbs up. You don't even have to say it out loud because we'd all prefer you didn't. Right. Plausible this liability. I would give you, in a second, thumbs up. Do it. Go forward. I want. I want this. No one talks about it. We're going to defend our solar system against possible alien threat. No one needs to know. We'll get individuals who know how to keep their mouth shut. I'm not worried about it. And, and in my opinion, if Solar Warden is a real program, bravo. Well done. Right. Keep, keep doing it. Keeping that under wraps for that long. 
pretty amazing. Not not just the idea of keeping it under wraps. Keep it going. Mm, right. Yeah. I am okay with this. And I'm okay with the rest of us being complete shit <laughs> ignorant about <laughs> right? it. Yeah. I think the rest of the world would be okay with this right now. Like, freaking good job. Right? I mean, it, there's to me... Operation Solar Warden is one of those conspiracy theories where if it came out tomorrow that all of it was real, man, who are the scientists? Because they deserve a high five. Mm -hmm. Who are the guys who've kept their mouths shut for all this time? Because they deserve a high five. And how do I get on the ship? And how do I get on the ship? <laughs> exactly. Yes. That's my only thing. It, that would be my complaint. Yeah, how, come, how come I couldn't, as a kid look forward to doing this for my government right mm -hmm. i know what i know what my career goal in life would have been right there oh, that's yeah. it that's all the, i don't care Off if i'm space. mopping the floor up there i don't care if they're like well what you i work in sanitation okay cool <laughs> that's fine but, but I'm, I'm, on on, I'm on a spaceship i'm on a spaceship yeah yep. i'm that little guy from the lego movie spaceship you know that's <laughs> right. what i want that that would be my only complaint now, at the time in 1985, what did we really have? Well, the public was aware of four shuttles, right? The, the space shuttle program, an extremely successful program, an amazing program. We had four capable of carrying eight people max. That is 32 people in space maximum. If you had all shuttles up at and once. All at yeah. once. And that never happens. Right. I don't think we've ever had two. There's right? never been more no. than one at a time. Never yeah. more than one. And yet the five top scientists are telling our president, I could put 300 up there right now. Holy crap. So there's something going on. Reagan, you know, he, he might not have thought that this, his journal was going to be, you know, published for the public. I'm sure he knew that it would be held by the government, but maybe he thought it would have been omitted or, or something That's like that. That's not a good way to get money. Like, uh, we, we could get 300 people if you give us <laughs> this funding, but, see, but if they already can do it. See, but if, if you were my scientist and you say, I could do 300 right now, I'd go, well, what about 600? Right. How do, how do we take this higher? Yeah. I, how how do, do we have yeah. an entire battalion of people in space? It's a big solar system, man. Mm -hmm. So they, they had the funding already. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, that's, it's it. interesting you bring that up because the National Defense Authorization Act of 2023 was 857.9 billion. The 2023 black budget, we'll call it, um speculated to be around 99.6 billion dollars. You can do a lot of cool stuff with that kind of money. A lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool money. stuff. And again, you know, I understand there's a lot of people out there who, who probably don't like me for saying these things, but there is just some stuff I don't think the public needs to know. Right. I just, I like don't. Like if we have big giant space cruisers, you just go, how's that going to impact Steve Sisson? <laughs> yeah, well, right. <laughs> my only beef with that is what I was saying before, you know, my kids would work so hard in, in STEM. Right. To, to, to become, you know, one of these individuals that gets to go do that. I, I think we as an American people would be all right with that. But maybe, you know, there are reasons why they're like, we're not going to expose this. You know, we're not going to tell them that we've got this going on. And 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 maybe there's lawsuits. Maybe there's ideas where, like, you know, the UFO community is going to stand up and be like, I'm going to sue you. For saying that uh, I was crazy. And mm. here you are mm. doing all this stuff. And I mean, maybe there's liabilities that we don't understand. Uh, and and do I say, you know, am I saying that that's justification? No, but still, if there's a reason why we shouldn't know about this, I'm okay with that. As long as they're up there doing their job, I'm still all right with this. And think about where we would be now. You know, a lot of this information is, is like from 2000s, you know, the aughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we've got drones, baby drones. So mm -hmm. if if I had an aircraft carrier sized ship in outer space, I wouldn't have Starbuck and his fighter cruising around. No, I got Robot Jim. I got, you know, Proby. Proby. Yeah. I, I got drones to go out there and do that kind of stuff. I wouldn't put my pilots at risk. I'd have an AI controlled drone system you find a target 43 drones out of the ship 
like little fighters that work together would never bump into each other because each one knows where the other one is and each one knows where the other one's going. Oh, it'd be amazing. But slowly, that's where we're going. Exactly. Yeah. And, and they're letting that out. Yeah. Yeah. It, it kind of sounds like Floyd's bucking for a position. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's keeping his <laughs> options on the table. I'm just saying, you know, and, and so there was one conversation. Let me finish this and then we'll get into this uh, other stuff here. Now, in 2007, uh, amateur astronomer John Leonard Walson actually developed he started playing with his own computer programs he started playing with his own telescopes okay and he developed a way to take photos of stars through a process of image layering he would use four separate cameras you know infrared night vision uh uh and and others i'm not totally sure on those and then he would compile them down to one photo and so he was getting great photos and you can actually still go to his twitter to this day i did and By taking photos and video in multiple spectrums and then compiling them into one image, he actually ended up capturing images of these large craft. And he's like, what the hell is this? You know, so he puts it up because he's like, I don't know what what body is up there. And I mean, I've seen these images and they're impressive. Yeah. These things are huge, very cool looking. And, and so then all of a sudden, he's getting visited by the infamous black helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Now, now look, I've never bought the black helicopter crap. Never. Oh, I, I never thought that I don't there know was that black it's helicopters that are crap, cruising Florida. around. <laughs> I take it all back mm-hmm. because I've seen his videos. I've seen the photos that he took outside of his home and he was being buzzed by black Apaches Black uh, Chinooks. This guy was being buzzed. No tail numbers. No. No. No identifying mark whatsoever. No. And see, here's the deal. If it was a Kiowa, I'd have been like, eh, that could be news for all you know. That right. could be a private helicopter. Mm-hmm. But this was an Apache painted stealth black. And you could see, he's got multiple photos of these things. And half the time, even at night, they're not running lights. No. You don't get to not run lights unless you're the people that. All right. Cannot run light. <laughs> yeah. And and as someone who served with uh, a lot of those uh, those guys overseas, oh man, if you don't know they're there, you'd never know they were there. You have no idea they're in the air. And and they were angels in Iraq because I knew they were there. Bad guy didn't know they were there. And they could be watching the entire battlefield, and they'd be giving us information. He's here, moving there. And I mean, he's hundreds of yards away in the complete dark. And when it gets dark in the desert, it gets dark. And they're watching him from hundreds of yards away. They're keeping us up to date on what he's doing. And he had no idea that there was two of them sitting right above him. These things can be elusive. And those, again, those were just little Kiowas. Those were not Apaches. Those were not like mega fighters, tank destroyers. The photos... That uh, Mr. Walson has, the video he has, are Apaches. I watched him this morning. I looked at him this morning. And for the first time, I was like, holy crap. The black <laughs> helicopters are real. They're I real. could have told you that they were real. <laughs> I think you did forever it's, ago. You did tell him that. Yeah. But I mean, it's just, this is the first time where you but really can okay. see them. So that that's the conspiracy thing, though, right? That feeds the conspiracies. People are, ah, black helicopters, crap. Yeah. No, it's not. They're there. And then people go, oh, my God, they're there. And then you go UFOs and they go, oh, that's crap. And then there's congressional hearings. <laughs> like, so when you look at something like this and you go, ah, oh, that's crap. Is it? Is it? Supposedly not there. I mean, that's that's where all this comes from is their stories. Are they believable? No. Until they are. Mm-hmm. And then you look at it and you go, holy cow, that upends everything then that we know or realize yeah and why would these choppers expend the fuel the manpower and risk the equipment if it was if the photos that he posted were bullshit 
Yeah, they're not buzzing the tower to be like, wow, just stop with your <laughs> silly photos. And there's more than one. Like, he, there's a series where he's like, oh, they're back. But And I mean, these things aren't like miles away. No, they're like, they're right yes. above his house. They they are harassing Imagine him. Imagine being his neighbor. Being like, <laughs> oh, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> Who'd you hack? Or who'd you yeah. call? What photos do you have, man? Find a new hobby for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah. And that's a little excessive for a noise complaint. Yeah. Put your camera down, you jerk. <laughs> I'm just trying to have a barbecue yeah. over here. <laughs> Can't you just build model trains like everyone else? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's just really intriguing to me. Um, now, you can actually see these because... Where I saw them, and I, I want to cite this because this, this guy has them. I saw these videos posted by another conspiracy host, uh, Forgotten History. And for the first time, I saw black helicopters. Uh, and, and he got them uh, off of John Leonard Walson's. I mean, he cites it right there. And so I went, I was like, okay, so I can search this. Yeah, you can search it. You can find it. Now... Another thing that uh, uh, we've made comment on that when it happened, I thought, boy, this is stupid uh, and a waste of money. But now I don't think so. Uh, Trump signed into law a new branch of the military, mm -hmm. the Space, Space Force. Force, Space Force. Yep. And a lot of us started making fun of that crap. But if you had Operation Solar Warden and we were getting ready to slowly introduce this into the public that this is real, that, you know, we're going to expand on it. You'd need a force. You'd need a legitimate force that legitimate people, not black operations, legitimate servicemen and women could join to serve. But they were a joke when it first came out. They're like, what do you actually do? Oh, we take care of satellites. Yeah, right. Mm. So you made a whole branch to take care of satellites. The Air Force was doing that just fine. Yep, Air Force has been doing that forever. And, and right. I mean, like you said, they've been doing it just fine. Yeah. Bang up job over there. So what? why suddenly spend millions, if not billions of dollars and in, in resources, administration time, rewriting various things to develop a whole new branch of the military? I mean... That's not like something that you just wake up and do as president. This that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's a and and even by the time Trump announced it, I'll guarantee that had been in the works for a long time. Because as president, you can't do that either. You just don't wake up and like, you know, <laughs> he's the one I that got a great this. idea. You can't do it. It it there's too many other controls in place. He's the one that got to announce it. He's the, yes. Yeah. He's the one who was, got to was, say my administration has done. That. It was all about the timing of it. It, it. That's, this has been so solar warden's been in development since 80, right? Mm -hmm. 1980 is what they hypothesize. So, yeah, I mean, you start thinking about that and you go, okay, well, 40 some years later, yeah, it's time to start slow walking this thing out there. I mean, how many how many branches of the government or of the military have there been forever? Four, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you just add one. Yeah. Well, and a lot of that isn't isn't a lot of that just kind of rebranding existing Air Force because like the Patrick Air Force Base in Florida is now the Patrick Space Force Base. Yeah. So how much new elements are being added rather than just uh, you know changing some of the Air Force to the Space Force. Okay, but that, that's something that we've classically done. Okay, uh, U.S. Army Air Corps yeah, was yeah. the Air Force before the Air Force. Yeah. U.S. Marines are just a corps. Mm -hmm. They're the hardest, you know, hard as a coffin nail SOBs out there, but they're just a core of the Navy. Um, so we that's what we do. You know, we got enough people interested in actually serving in the U.S. Army Air Corps and things were developing so quickly uh, with Operation Paperclip that <laughs> all of a sudden we were like, wait a minute, we should devote an entire branch to this. Look at what's going on in our world right now. And I'm not saying people are stupid for not paying attention to this. What I am saying is that's why your jackalopes are here so that we can say, look. Let's bring it all. Let's let's take those lines that you see the crazy guys with the chalkboards. Let's take them down. U.S. government has heard testimony from three credible eyewitnesses about the existence of UFOs and a program 
to reverse engineer their technology that has been going on since the 1950s, if not sooner than that, mm -hmm. or it, you earlier, know what I mean, yeah. earlier than that. All right. So now at least there's a section of the American populace who are now taking kind of knock back on our heels going, whoa, 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 whoa. So all this talk, all this BS might be real. And there are people who I trust. Now, look, I don't know these guys personally, but I trust my servicemen and women. And these three individuals are of the utmost professionalism. And under, like, you can't give them any more credentials. If, if I'm going to believe somebody, it'd be these three. And they're saying, yes, they're here, and we're reverse engineering their technology. Wake up, man. Okay, so we got that going on. Okay. Now we're looking at certain. Now, then you got Space Force that's suddenly boop out there, right? 2007, you got a guy taking photos of these things in outer space, and his house is getting buzzed by black helicopters, and he's got photographic and video proof of all of this. I think it's all coming to a head. And then you have mathematicians and scientists who are like, hey, something's going on. We can't really talk about it. A few of us are working on projects, but it's big. Mm -hmm. It's Man if? Manhattan Project Big. What, do, what is the next 40 years really going to look like? Oh, I'm excited to find out. Mm -hmm. you know, like, <laughs> because I think we're going to find out. Like, think about it, man. The economy's in the shit tank. Mm -hmm. We got how many climate scientists looking at us going, man, number one, the oil is drying up. Number two, the damage that we've done to this planet maybe irreversible. Everyone's kind of coming to the table. What if the group that has been behind all of this is finally at the point where they're like, we got to show them. Yeah. We've got to come forward with all of this and take civilization to the next step. What an amazing time to be alive that would be. It would be exciting and there would be pandemonium. Absolutely. I, I well, agree there's with always the pandemonium. pandemonium. Mm -hmm. but, but I mean, okay. Uh, this morning I thought about something having to do with the economy. I was walking by one of the studios and I heard one of our hosts talking about the price of beer. They're like, holy crap. You know, you walk into this place, it's $9 for a goddamn beer. Yeah, that's expensive. Three years from now, you're going to be paying $9 <laughs> for a beer and you're not going to think about it. Right. Right, because yeah. that's just the price of beer. That's just the way it is. That uh, When we put electric lines up for the first time in this country, people were like, we're all going to get cancer and die. Yep. <laughs> those those damn power lines are going to kill us all. Yep. Now, uh, look at what happened. But the conspiracy is a long time ago of they're putting aliens and UFOs and other planets into the media, so we're all more comfortable with it. We are. We're all more comfortable. Oh, 100%. With, yeah, we're with definitely the idea, more comfortable now than ever before. With the idea of this happening. Yep. I mean, and just the popularization amongst kids like Lilo and Stitch. Well, what was Stitch? An alien. An alien. Friendly yeah. alien. And mm -hmm. I mean, so you get two, three-year-olds going, oh, aliens are great. They're fun. You know, so the first yeah. major movie that I remember seeing in a, in a theater was E.T. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I wanted nothing more. Than to have an alien as a best friend. <laughs> I, I know I'm probably dating myself at this point, but I saw Close Encounters of the Third Kind in the theater. I was little. Yeah. And the next thing I had to have was this rubber pink alien doll with like the wires inside. Yeah. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Yep. 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 I mean, from then to now, <laughs> I still have a bunch of rubber alien dolls. <laughs> it just has on my shelf. But, yeah. yeah. But I mean, how. Brilliant. Well, just familiarize you with it. Make it, like, not that big of a deal. And and what about religion? Okay. The, the, the essential epitome of Christianity. And I'm sure Protestants are like, wrong. But in the Christian world, everyone looks to the Pope. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And like, even, even Protestants are like, well, the Pope said it. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's got to be kind of holy. Well, he came forward and said... What he said, what was it, 2014? He came like, forward and said, if there's alien life, be. it is God's alien life, yep. mm -hmm. and we should accept that. And then basically dropped the mic, turned around, and walked <laughs> away. Right? right? Boom, out of done. nowhere. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Out of nowhere. 
Yeah, it wasn't like it was a hot topic in the news at the time or anything. He no. just kind of came Slid out. Slid right it. underneath the door. Yep. But I can remember uh, somebody talking about what is going to happen when full disclosure finally takes place. What are the steps that has to happen? And step number, I think like either number one or number two was religions will have to say something. Mm -hmm. And those religious leaders have to start with the Pope. Because after that, now any Christian, whether they be Protestant or Catholic, can basically say, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. if there are, sure. then they're God's aliens. And, and we're going to look at it that way from now on. Well, that's happened. Now we got Space Force. Now uh, we've got resources and, and servicemen and women devoting their life to the defense of outer space. What if the curtain is finally going to be pulled back? And I'm not saying it's all going to drop at once, right? You can't let it. They have a PR team, right? You can't do that. Yeah. It's too much of a culture shock for all of us. But if we slowly do it over the course of a couple decades, you know, okay, well, those guys said that aliens are real. Okay, he said that we've got a program. Okay, Roswell was real. Uh, okay, no one paid attention to that. Okay, no one paid attention to that. Okay, no one paid attention to that. All right, we're getting away with this. <laughs> right. We're getting away. Yeah. Like, this is working. <laughs> yeah. 40 years. What is this world going to look like? My, my concern right now is you have Billy Bob shooting at a hurricane <laughs> in Florida. Like, what, what is he going to do when an alien Look, man, shows that's, up? That's, that's just human behavior. Yeah. You're always going to have, you know, the Billy Bobs and the Sally Sues out there shooting at the sky. That's always going to happen. Those folks who want to stay in the Stone Age or stay behind, stay behind. I don't care. I'm sorry, but I don't. You don't want to care. It's, it's like... You know, some folks who, who want to get mad because I, I you know, we, well, I don't have a computer. It's 2024. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to rip out Walter Cronkite because you didn't have a TV in the house. Right. Catch up uh, or well, stay or, where you're at. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, and my father uh, in, in 2000 got a computer. He's an old cowboy. This man had just discovered that there was more than three channels. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I come home from college one day and there it is. Boop, sitting right there. And I'm like, no shit. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, and I'm taking a class. Now, dad goes everywhere with his laptop. He's, he's monitoring cows with it. He's doing all kinds of stuff. And this is somebody who I thought for sure would never do anything like that. And he's one of the most computer savvy guys I know. You can catch up if you want to. You can teach an old dog new tricks. It's up to the dog. No, it's not the trick. Mm. So that's what I would tell people. And I would tell people, if this is the way that it is, reality can sometimes be quite difficult to accept. But mm, On a daily basis, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's still reality. What did we have happen? What was it? A year and a half, two years ago? Maybe longer. COVID kind of messed everyone up. But right around then, all the CEOs were... We're walking away. Oh yeah. What if like all the elites already knew? Well, there's a lot of uh, bunker building going on and things like that. Too. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yep. What yeah. if we were sending that spaceship away, like to find another Earth? Like, hey, the elections aren't going to matter. We don't care who runs. Let these guys just have fun with this. God, it certainly looks like that. <laughs> it? Right. Mm -hmm. And let's all build our bunkers and hope they do find that planet. And. You know, it's it, we've talked about uh, 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 how would I be if I was actually a CEO of one of these companies that was approached by the U.S. government to help reverse engineer this stuff. You know, I mean, we had some great companies, man. GE, DuPont, these these huge companies who were developing amazing technologies. IBM. Yeah. Whatever happened to them? Hmm. And then you find a UFO in your backyard. And you're a bunch of privates and a general standing around going, I don't know what to do with it. You know, I kicked it. Didn't move. I don't know what else to do. Okay, well, go get a scientist. Go get these guys in the private field. We'll cut a deal. You can have some of this tech. Just keep your damn mouth shut about it and help us reverse engineer this. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you've got Skunk Works, which absolutely had private industry helping out with that entire thing and they mm -hmm. developed amazing technologies now what what have i always said those labs aren't closing a door man 
You're going to bed. I'm going to work. 24-7, 365. Now, do that since 1950. Oh, yeah. There's, We've gotten somewhere. There's some good, good tech that's come out of that stuff for sure. And that's the thing is you look at it, and yes, Roswell was the big one, but there were several instances before that. Yeah, I what mean, they say, and, like and nine really, or something? Yeah. And going all the way back to ancient paintings, you know, on pyramid walls of spacecraft and whatever. So God only knows how long they've been around, but that was the first big publicized one. Look at how technology has leapt forward, and Sisson can speak to this, or Proby, <laughs> that, I mean, it's, it's leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. That didn't just happen. Right. That had to have come from somewhere. I mean, people are pretty ingenious, don't get me wrong, but you go from, you know, the wheel to, okay, now we got some pyramids happening, and all of a sudden now we've got stuff in space like <laughs> where did that so i, I would come think in. like one of the biggest leaps and correct me if i'm wrong tubes okay the vacuum, vacuum tubes, tubes yeah. to the microchip yeah uh, the transistor is in between those two uh personally i don't think there is any moment where you can say it took an illogically large leap it's all evolutionary uh relays physical relays just a switch that closes and opens then a vacuum tube that does the same thing but does it quicker then a transistor that does the same thing that does it quicker, then a microchip that does the same thing that does it quicker. I think that's a logical evolution. And that took a, a, a significant amount of time. I mean, it happened fairly quickly in the whole scope of human history. But, you know, once you've got the idea of a vacuum tube and you've got the idea of a transistor, those things will, will develop quickly once that idea is in place and proven to work. Yeah. So I don't think there's anything really there that you can't explain through a natural evolution of developing technology. Damn yeah. it, Sisson. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I can remember somebody was like, you know, Velcro is probably alien. No, it's not. The guy was walking in his field and he got those seeds. Uh, yeah, and whatever's. every single, you know, person who's ever walked a field in Wyoming, those seeds attached to him and he got curious as to why. Mm -hmm. And so he peeled them off and he's like, oh, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. If, yeah. And, and how do we build it? Yeah. That's the thing. Once you figure out how to make it, then things will develop rapidly after that. And then you get these genius kids who are coming out of high school and going into these colleges and they're building their technology on the back of that technology, mm -hmm. on the back of that technology. And so it might appear like a leap, but it's just someone you solved. The, you made fire. Mm hmm. Aaron figured out how to transport it from one fire to another, and I'm the one who figured out how to throw it. Now we got a flamethrower. Yeah, and the, and the rate of development can exponentially increase once you open up certain... It's like a sphere of knowledge. The, the perimeter of the sphere keeps getting larger the more you know. And so it, once you open up that door, things will start to develop much quicker than they were before, too. Yeah. But on a scary note, we don't know our principles. How many people can actually work a lathe can do the basics well, yeah. right now. Losing the basics, the foundation on which yeah. all this stuff was yeah. built. Yeah. 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 And that's, uh, you know, when people are like, oh, the you know, EMP back to the Stone Age. You know, like, well, <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. Stone Age, it, it, it wasn't that bad. And it's not that long ago. There's still people alive. Like my grandma, she can remember as a little kid uh, sitting in the back of the horse drawn carriage. Yeah. She oh, told me to start sure. going, going to the farm, yeah. sitting in the back of the carriage. She said the the one image that stuck out to her was she she liked her striped socks because they were more than one color. So she thought they were just amazing. So she remembers seeing her feet dangle off and she was kicking watching the road go by. And she's like, but it was horse drawn carriage everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on the farms that they grew up on, there wasn't electricity. There wasn't plumbing. You were out there by yourself. That's what? Two generations before me? Yeah. yeah. If you're 80 or 90 years old, you went from something like that to now people have TVs strapped to their face. Like yeah. It's, yeah. it's nuts yeah. what they've seen. Well, how long was it from where the Wright brothers I was just playing yeah. off the ground yeah. to how yeah. we were walking on the moon? It it's wasn't nuts. very long. Yeah. Yeah. Within, a, I mean, a, a reasonable, well, a long, I'd say two generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, two good generations were there. Mm -hmm. So, although... You know, that's why I think like these reverse engineered uh, UFOs, the technology that we are allowed or that the, the private companies probably were allowed to use were so minuscule or they gave someone else the idea. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is like if you are going to be working this reverse engineered stuff in, you don't want it to be obvious that, right? you know, yeah. hey, this shouldn't exist yet. 
it needs to be plausible where it's like, okay, that kind of makes sense. They just kind of improved on this and that. And here it is. Well, and I heard, uh, rumors years ago that that steve jobs had touch screens like in the 80s or 90s but he told everybody that's not how you run a company we're not gonna release everything right now release this this year let them go nuts and spend the money release that next year let them go nuts and spend more money release this in a couple years <laughs> let them go nuts and spend the money it's a slow and then release process. a bunch of stuff all at once. So all of your other things are outdated yes. <laughs> and they go nuts and spend the money. Yes, I, there is a in order for that to work, though, you have to have complete control over that technology, because as soon as that gets out, someone else is going to beat you to it. Right. And so you want to always be ahead of everybody else. So there is the uh, the impetus to go ahead and do it now and be ahead of everybody else. So you have to unless you know for sure that that's never going to get out and you're going to be able to hang on to this for 10 years. I think you would put it out right now. So, Aaron, did you find anything that I didn't find? No, yeah, not really. I mean, it's it's all out there that they rebranded it in 1990 from Solar Warden to Radiant Guardian. Ooh, <laughs> right. I, 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 I didn't know, find right? that. How yeah. luminous. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting because, you know, you hearken back to the whole Reagan thing, the diary, um, and then his speech on September 21st, 1987, uh, to the UN. two years after his diary. Yes. Where, and I'm just paraphrasing him, but perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bond. Mm -hmm. Uh, I occasionally think about how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Project and yet Olivia. I ask you, is not an alien threat already facing us um but he was he was then went into talking about war and it's just it was an odd comparison yeah. to bring in aliens extraterrestrials if he was the guy in 80 and then subsequently when he wrote his diary and delivered this message that he knew he knew what we were up to and he was just kind of again slow leaking it out there mm -hmm. yeah. and what we needed to be unified right yeah, and I think that's a that's not he's not alone in that argument of of the theory of like you know we have a lot more in common than we have differences, but we focus on our differences unless we have a common enemy, yeah, and right. then we all unite. And that's that. the whole point of the Watchmen graphic novel. Yeah, yeah, and so I think the idea that an alien would be would unite the entire planet, an alien invasion of some sort. I think that's not unique to him. So yeah, he could just be using it as an analogy, right? But kind of coincidental that it would also be from the same guy who was thinking about this for some time. Correct. Yeah. And then so under Radiant Guardian, they actually started fine tuning some of this stuff. So before any extraterrestrial vessels can enter our solar system, there's a protocol, which means any UFOs that we're seeing are either ours or we're like, oh, yeah, you guys can come in. You're We've cool. vetted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have to stay in a certain square of space until identified to make sure that they're not hostile. Then they're given a permitted flight path. You can go here. So it's not take take me to your leader. It's no, you, you're going over here. You don't get to fly around just anywhere. Um, the solar system is divided into grids, which is further divided into patrol zones. And there were actually, I found, and if I find them again, I'll put them in post or whatever. But there's actually like gridded solar system maps. So again, red herring or... That's a real thing that got leaked out somewhere. Or Yellowstone. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right? And yes. sometimes they pick up the bison and go pet them. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but I found it interesting about who is on these ships. And you covered this. American, Canadian, British, Australian, Italian. You know, so, I mean, it's, it's also multicultural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and you kind of look at on a small scale and it's kind of like, that, hey, look at this shiny object, you know, the International Space Station. Hey, look at all the cool stuff we're doing up here with all these different countries, whatever. And don't pay attention to the big, giant flying aircraft carrier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A, a few things that come to my mind is uh, it, it's impossible to hide a rocket launch. Uh, you know, that's a noticeable event. And you can say, oh, it's a top secret, you know, uh, spy satellite or whatever. And you're just going to launch these things up. But. The, the fact that that stuff's getting put into orbit can't be hidden. 
And right. if you're looking at something like the International Space Station, which is like 100 meters and easily spottable with the naked eye, anything larger than that in Earth orbit, it's not going to be one guy with pictures of it. Anybody with a decent telescope is going to be able to get a picture of it, and it's going to be really easy to spot. I think, I think it's really hard to hide that stuff from the public. Unless, and they probably had to... unless what Bob Lazar was talking about, the engine, applies. The gravity engine. With the element that can yeah. bend the light field. Mm -hmm. Cloaking devices. And if uh, Bob Lazar uh, said that he actually got to go watch a demonstration of this, and he said it just silently comes off the ground, and they hovered there for a little bit, and once it's enveloped in this gravity envelope, it can go as fast as it wants. Like, it literally can just zoop, mm -hmm. and you can't see a damn thing. He said there's a blue field when it first kicks on. He said, but once it gets about 10 feet up in the air, you can't even tell it's there. It's just not because the gravity field bends all the light completely around it. So what, what about what kind of noise would it make? He said it was like a hum. So but not, again, but nothing, again, unless you were right there, you wouldn't hear it. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, unless you're standing right there, you wouldn't be able to hear it at all. The one thing he said he couldn't figure out was they were in radio communication. And he said, inside that gravity field, they shouldn't be able to do that. Right. If it's bending light, it's going to bend radio waves. But too. somehow, he said they were able to talk to the individual who was playing around with this thing. And this is like 1983, early 80s, sometimes, sometime around there, when they were taking test flights of these UFOs that they had found and developed and, and kind of fixed and repaired. And now they were messing around. So I propose. Uh, because I told your arguments are completely le legitimate. That is a lot of material. Mm -hmm. How the hell are There's you a lot of launches? Think about that. Yeah. Think about, I don't think people understand the size of an aircraft carrier. My God, those things are monsters. That is a floating city of yeah. well, freedom. Look at you how know long what it I mean? took to build the ISS. I mean, that was a ton of launches oh. just to get that much material up into orbit. It's incredible. And you yeah. have to build it in space. And you got to put it together. Yeah. And how public is that? You know, every time, like you said, you can't hide a launch. Well, especially if you have uh, China and places like that that are wanting to see what we're up to. They're oh, looking they're for watching. that kind of yeah. stuff. And they're watching. Yeah, you can't hide those launches. Unless I had that gravity engine. Yeah. And I could literally just do it from Groom Lake or mm -hmm. Antarctica. Right. Because right. I take yeah. everything to Antarctica, right? You're not paying attention to U.S. military shipping lanes. If you are, you should be watched. The, the thing about <laughs> but, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I could be shipping this stuff down there, and I could just be using my gravity thing whoop, up into the air I go. Yeah, you, it would be a whole different system, though, because there are certain physics involved with getting something into Earth orbit, which is why the launching platforms are where they are places like florida they're kind of near the equator um it, it, it launching from antarctica would take a whole different set of you know commands to get it into orbit but once again if i had a gravity envelope generating engine it doesn't matter where yeah, you I could am. take it off from anywhere anywhere on yeah. earth <laughs> completely silent and if it's gravity it could be as big as i want well do, just do it all in one shot and i'll possibly blow your mind with this one. But so part of this whole thing is also space stations. You touched on that. Mars, the moon, the permanent, yeah, Venus, and they, right? and they would have oh, I didn't be, hear about the one on Venus. One on Venus. So if those colonies have been there for God knows how long, 40 years. 40 let's, years. Let's say we established the first one 40 years ago. Maybe they're manufacturing up there with the elements mm -hmm. and materials that they're finding on the planets putting all this stuff together going okay shoot it off that's and brilliant build it in space back behind the planet yeah, where we can't see it and supposedly it was interesting because this guy got these photos of these things and i mean if you really look into that they're really far out there yeah so yes the iss you can see go by because it's you know gleaning some sunlight and whatever and you can tell it's not a natural object because of the way it's moving but these things operate in deep space. They're not, you know, like a satellite. So they're not necessarily in orbit around the Earth. Correct. No, no they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're actually way out there. there. Mm -hmm. So if they're building, if they're manufacturing on a different planet or on the dark side of the moon, which 
China, you know, just released their photos of the dark side of the moon. Right. Good job. <laughs> um, well, they want to play. Come yeah, on. right. <laughs> Yo, uh, it looks like the front side with a couple more lines. What are you doing? <laughs> we can um, keep our mouth shut, too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but if you're manufacturing that stuff out there and you're building this, we have no idea. Yeah, yeah you, can't, you can't hide it. Maybe with the gravity, you know, feed. But if they're just doing it somewhere else. We'd have no idea. Yeah. And and what would it matter, right? Because right. Uh, who controls the James Webb telescope? The New World Order. The Illuminati. <laughs> who right. controls Hubble? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, we can literally look at the guy who's getting these photos and say, that gets airbrushed, that gets airbrushed, and that gets airbrushed. Oh, NASA airbrushes almost all the time. every photo they release. And here's the deal. Those beautiful, beautiful images. That we see of our galaxy, which are absolutely spectacular, are colored so you can see them. Well, it's all just data coming from a satellite yes. somewhere. It's not an actual picture. They right. have to build the picture out of the data. Like the ones with the black hole. Yeah. Like those aren't real. Yeah. No, yeah, photos. yeah. You have to yeah. build that mm -hmm. because you can't see them. That's not the way they look. Well, there's mean, an astronaut up there shaking the polar <laughs> And then just chuck it back down there. Yeah. yeah. Watch this. I'm really good at cards. Yep. Put it in a little canister and aim carefully. Yes. Like one of those uh, air shoots at the bank. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's on its way. <laughs> yeah. It, Aaron, I really love the fact that you brought that up. Like, I wouldn't even need resources if the bases are established. And we think about what technologies you and I are allowed to look at every day, right? Like, the day... The B-52 was exposed to the world. Me and my father were watching the news. My dad was, was very adamant about, you need to watch this. And so he would have me sit down. I got to watch the Berlin Wall fall. Mm -hmm. I knew who Russia was and who, or excuse me, USSR was and what they meant when I was a very young boy. Because that stuff was very important to my dad. And when they unveiled the B-2 bomber, I can remember my dad was sitting in what we called the dad chair, you know, the recliner. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he said, if we're seeing that... They got something a lot better. Mm -hmm. That's You're crazy because the same thing happened to me. I was an, at an air show when I was seven, and they were unveiling the F-117 stealth fighter oh, at beautiful. the air show. You could, you could walk up to it, and there was guys with big M-16s and velvet robe. You couldn't go past it. And I was looking at this thing. I was like, Dad, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And my dad goes, if you're seeing this... We've already had it for 20 years. This is yep. old news. This is old news. By the time the government says that. So think about drones. Uh, you know, it, uh, Proby, you're on the cutting edge <laughs> of, of like a lot of drone technology, AI. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, AI uh, was a government thing before it was a privatized thing because they were pretty quick about getting that out for everybody. But the idea does exist that all of these technologies have been around for a really long time, but the government was taking advantage of them long before. Right. They were released to the private industry. Yeah. Well, GPS is one of those things where the uh, the accurate GPS was open to the public at a certain point. Yeah. But the military had accurate GPS well before we did. That's why, uh, you know, even at my lowly level of National Guard soldier, when we were in Iraq, I knew uh, it, you got to go and get all this information and put it into your computers. Because if we don't want bad guy to use GPS, guess what? The U.S. just shuts it off. Mm -hmm. Right. They just pick a section of the earth and they're like, done. So any private GPS unit no longer works in that area. And the U.S. Army is the only one. Or U.S. service is the only one who can actually operate GPS systems in that space. And so I can remember thinking to myself, well, they've been on top of this for literally ever by the time we get it in our hands. Like they've, they, they know how to not just turn it on, but turn it off if they need to. Mm -hmm. So, Proby, would you, would you assume that, you know, we all know about, like, the drone fighters, uh, even right here in Wyoming, we have a, an infantry unit that uses drones. Um, do you think that the U.S. government could possibly have, like, drone and robotic technology uh, on other planets? I mean, is it even feasible? I think people already think there's a drone here that's... That predates us, which is, I think we've already talked about it, the Black Knight satellite mm -hmm. um, that's been orbiting the, the planet for quite a while. People think that's AI from outside of our solar system. Um, I think it would, 
we send stuff off like these little drones here and there but now with ai like we could be really sending stuff off yeah yeah like so really it, far away yeah now i don't even need people on the planet's surface you know uh i often talk about how we're not going to be the ones exploring the universe and i think when we Our do robots will meet another species or whatever it's going to be through their ai same thing yeah so it, it'll end up being two robots that are communicating with each other yeah. as opposed to two of the actual species. Yeah. Boy, howdy, what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you better hope that programming code is all legit. <laughs> well, but I really want you to think about it. Take out the human equation. No pride. No fear. And, and what's, what is the cause of all war? Mm. Fear. That's it. I'm out of resources. I'm afraid I'm going to run out of resources. I'm out of land. I'm afraid I'm going to run out of land. Your religion's going to be my religion. Your people are growing too fast. It's all fear. So remove fear. Now I'm not afraid of anything and, and you're not afraid of anything at all. We'd probably get along pretty well. They're probably going to get something done. They probably get something done. All of a sudden they start exchanging code because the universal language is mathematics. No matter whatever happens, you need math. Well, we already know that from uh, the movie Independence Day, all you need is a USB stick. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah. yeah. Right. And USB. It, yep. Yeah, it's not, I mean, universal is not just a clever name on that. Universal serial <laughs> class. <laughs> it, I mean, it came from yeah. the aliens. I mean, yeah, it obviously yeah. works on everything. Well, and, you know, Proby brings up a good point about the Black Knight satellite. I mean, they, they're theorized that thing could have been up there for, what, 14,000 mm -hmm. years, they think. We're sending stuff to Mars. We're sending stuff. Here. Send something to the Black Knight satellite. Right. I want to know what it, out. it is. Go check it out. But why are we not doing stuff like that? Because we don't want to do stuff like that. Somebody doesn't want everybody to know what that is. So, and, and maybe that's not it. Maybe someone's smart enough as they're sitting around going, hey, maybe, maybe we should explore that. And someone's like, what if, John? Mm. Okay. That thing's been up there for 14,000 years, maybe. Just waiting for Watching that. us. Yeah. What if. It is something, and I land a, a probe on it, and it's like, that's a threat, yeah, well. and I piss it off. Mm -hmm. What if? And then it decides, well, nah, time to wipe out life again. <laughs> right, reset button. What, if, what yep. if it's our babysitter, and we don't even know? It's our know baby it. monitor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What it's a it camera is? from another <laughs> universe. <laughs> yeah. It's just a big reality show for the aliens to watch. Or an experiment, or... Uh, a, we're nothing more than a simulation. You know, there, there's a lot of theories out there about that stuff, mm -hmm. but it's the idea that it could be very, very real. And what scares me most about the simulation theory is Are that this, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> yeah. yeah, number one. Yeah, <laughs> but it's who's talking about it. Oh, it's, right. It's Everybody. not us. It's not us crackpots. It's, it's us crackpots and very serious scientists. Um, at And, and you, you're going to have to go, folks, and, and Google all this and look it up yourself. But there was a, a man, uh, I can't remember his name. I hate talking about this stuff. But just to give you an idea, there was a, a, a very serious scientist who, whose job it was to break down just about everything mathematical in the universe. And he said, by the time the equation got down, it, it turned out to look exactly like binary. No, it was Neil deGrasse Tyson. No, yeah. he was the host. Oh, the the scientist he was talking to said, yeah, said he, when he dug down deep enough, it was just all binary code. It, it's all the same code yep. that we're using. But mathematically, it, it looked like the results of a search engine. Yeah, like what we would type into there Google. There you go. Yep, and that's exactly what he said, isn't it? Yep. So then, what does that mean? Well, that means it. That's it. Lends credit to the fact that we're nothing more than a simulation. Mm hmm. These are very serious scientists that are exploring in areas where we're like, what if it's all bullshit? <laughs> well, and if, I mean, it kind of lends credence, though, to all of these things being possible. Because if it's a simulation, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Real life physics things don't apply. Mm -hmm. You can make it do whatever you want That in that same Theory, they said that's why the speed of light is the speed of light. Because that's the limit that they put in to keep us from actually going and doing things. That's the speed of the processor. It can't it can't it can't go it can't make faster. the simulation go any quicker than that. Right. But recently an AI, 
uh, one of them super AIs actually said, not only are wormholes possible, they're in the universe. Now, I'm not saying let's all start trusting AI. No, because they're guessing just like we are. But what is specific and special about a supercomputer AI like that? It can look at things mathematically exponentially faster than I can. Especially with quantum computers now. Boom. Mm -hmm. It works out the math so damn fast that it's like, oh, yeah. On a mathematical scale, it's not only probable, they're there. Yeah, it's it's for certain. It's for certain. Yep. This is what's going on. So now I don't even need the speed of light. I don't need your your limit. I can bend space time. How is that? Like, I want you to take a moment and think about that statement. It doesn't matter the distance. It doesn't matter if you're next to me or clear across the universe. I can bend space time and be right next to you. Well, they just recently found out that the James Webb telescope just found images of things that predate the Big Bang. Mm. And that just blows all the theories out of the water. Right? What like, was here before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the thing is, it's it's all a guess. Oh, it's man. all a guess. It's all us going, well, I think that this is the okay. thing. And how cool is it? And our, and our biggest problem is we're trying to do it from within the simulation. Yeah. Right. It's, you have a very limited perspective inside there. Well, I've said it before. I the universe is, might be simulating itself from a different dimension to find out what's on the third dimension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like a second dimension universe is throwing out a yeah. third dimension scenario. And we're, we're 3D Pac-Man and in 2D Pac-Man, 2D Pac-Man can't even understand what is outside of its right. world. Yeah. Well, we, I mean, think about what a fourth dimension would be for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We couldn't even wow. perceive it. Can't, yeah. We can't even, like, how would that even work? But you what could occasionally that? glimpse things moving through it and not understand what it is because you're seeing it from a three-dimensional perspective. Yeah. As something moves through, all of a sudden you're like, what is that? And what did Grush say at the, the, the testimony? They're here. Mm -hmm. They've always been here. Oh, well, are they from off-planet? Well, kind of. But not <laughs> they're really. in a different phase. Right. right. They're in a yeah. different phase. Yeah. So here's the like how insulting is it? You're like, get off my planet. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, yeah, homie, I was here before you were. <laughs> right. Like, right. Yeah. I, I, I just travel. We seated you here. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> I just travel 0.5 seconds faster than you do, so you can't see me. Or you and I exist in a different space time, a different time, but on the same plane of space. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa. They have a different password they're using yeah for life it, pretty much <laughs> well here i just this just came to me and this is kind of crazy too but what if these ships that he has photos of aren't ours what if we went up there and took them that'd be so freaking cool i mean <laughs> like imagine space we didn't have marine to build commandos them. kicking ass right like, yeah we didn't have to we didn't have to build anything we didn't have to launch anything these things showed up and we're like on an Apollo mission, they're like, you're not going to believe the shit that's behind yeah. the moon. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, okay, we're going to go take it. Let's go take it. Yeah, let's The I Aliens would. movie wasn't fiction. It was right. fact. Documentary. <laughs> right. But it, that'd be fascinating, though. Yeah. And then once we get one, we're able to build more. I mean, that's, that's or essentially steal the, more. Or maybe. It's like Grand Theft Universe. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and we got five stars. We better <laughs> do something. It's it's one of those things where we have to take a step back. You look at the evidence. A lot of people, uh, you know, I started looking at other individuals who who have explored this theory, and I think their perception of the world is a little skewed because they wanted to say, "Well, our technology is just not there yet." Mm -hmm. it's just not there yet. okay i could i agree it's not as far as you and i know mm -hmm. but one thing that i've talked about in the past if i was the government i'd be doing crap without everybody knowing i would be developing technologies because first thing i do is walk around gather everybody who is smarter than me find the best among them and then stick them in a room and that's, say that's what we do every time I'm, to get something done. Yes, I'm coming back in 42 hours, and I want ideas. Okay, great. Now, now I've got my idea men working on that. Now I take that to another think tank, 
prop, you know, propulsion, computers. That's what I would do. And I would have all these individuals paid by the U.S. government 24 hours a day, seven days a week, doing nothing but thinking of this crap. And then I would get the best engineers that there are, and I would be developing it. And I wouldn't tell anyone. I wouldn't tell the American people. I wouldn't tell the people who were elected for two and four years who were going to pop in and pop out. No one would know. Yeah, and if you've got damn near a trillion dollars, <laughs> you could do a lot of that. Now I'm building it. And I am going to do, I'm going to patrol the universe. Well, hey, we can get to Mars. Cool. Get me to Mars. Let's establish a base and we'll go farther past that. Now, get me to Titan. <laughs> now, get me to Pluto. Can we be on Pluto? Well, let's go find out. It's this not a is, planet, so yeah, you can. This is the crap that I would be doing, though. If I was the U.S. government, oh, I'd have done this a long time ago. Huh? The key is you've got to be able to hide it from all the other governments or be in cahoots with them. New world order. Yeah. That's the only way you can get it done. One of those two things has to be true. Yeah. I be totally agree with that. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to that, now I do red herrings. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have the X-37B, which is, you know, the secret, but everyone knows about it, plane that they have out there that can orbit around and do interesting maneuvers and stuff like that. And that's enough to make people go, oh, well, that's what they're up to. Yep. That's that's the project. Yeah. And see, once you find, uh, like we've talked about before, once you find that little nugget, oh, I found their secret. Yep. Now you stop looking. Yep. Right. Yep. There it is. Hey, they're onto something. China, can you throw a balloon over real <laughs> there quick? You go. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and we'll just let it go all the way across the country and then we'll shoot it down. Yeah, take it down. And another just... thing I do, I run a campaign. I run a Decades long campaign that anyone who sees a UFO is a nut job. Mm -hmm. You're crazy. I had this guy look at the entire thing and he says they're not real. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. And that's official. <laughs> yep. That's yep. the official word. Oh, until it's not, they're totally real. <laughs> and they're here. Well, they have been. you got to be able to time that. Right. Now, the amoral part. Is that wrong to do to people? Yeah. Would I do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd call you crazy and stick you in an institution if that's where you wanted to be. If you won't shut up, I got too many secrets for one individual to ruin it all. Mm -hmm. well, that's why. That's why Julian Assange is still on the lam. Man really? On the run. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he exposed far too much for one guy, and got, they don't like that. Look, man, I don't like corruption, but to me. That's not corruption. That's national security. If I got spaceships doing all this stuff and I got one guy who knows everything who's blowing the freaking whistle on it, that's national security issue. Oh, yeah. It's, there's nothing corrupt about that. You're just handing out too many damn secrets. You got to go. Right. So back to McKinnon, the stuff that he found, some of that is kind of sus to me. He, he might have found a, a honeypot. So in computer security... When you find a honeypot, or so if I'm building a firewall and I know someone's going to break through this someday, I put a server that looks like a whole bunch of goodies that you might want. I put yeah. that in the, at the beginning after the firewall. I'm like, ooh, look, there's aliens. Ooh, what, what else should we put in here? Uh, we have the keys to the universe right Big here. Foot. The formula for Bigfoot is right here. Yeah. 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 We're going to put that right here. So that's the, that's the, the first thing you're going to go look at. Okay. Yeah. We're going to make the password password on it and when you break in you're going to find that stuff and see on on a surface level i would completely agree with you except he dug for a year yep mm -hmm. yep he dug for a solid i mean that program wreaked havoc now now here's my deal he dug for a year and only caused eight hundred thousand dollars in damage baloney that's 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 not a lot of money i yeah. mean that's like that in the computer world that's nothing yeah right? it's that's, a couple days worth of work yeah it's nothing yeah he dug in there for a year that guy knows some shit <laughs> and and i totally buy the honeypot thing because that is a, a, a tactic mm -hmm. like that's what you do oh yeah but i would think that mckinnon one of the world's greatest hackers would literally look at that and be like, okay, well, that's honeypot. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Honeypot. yeah, too too much information. There. Now, too good. now I want to get down here. But then he finds just one document. Just one. After a year of searching, because then you got to think about it. He had to go through this. 
Mm-hmm. He had to look at that and be like, that's nothing, that's nothing. Oh, inventory of Office B floor 12. Oh, that's awesome. Nothing, nothing. Yep. What is this? Now you're looking at something that maybe somebody, you know, offhandedly was just like, hey, we did some transfers. Load some memos. It's nothing. Right. You know, John Smith transferred to ship eight. Teddy Ruxpin transferred. How to boring was five. that? <laughs> but how boring is yeah. that? Well, that's right? why you have to have a special kind of guy to do that, which is what he is. Too bad he didn't have AI at the time. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, could you imagine? My favorite part of him being the world's best hacker, though, and I mean, they said it was With the greatest, the hack greatest hack ever pulled history. off was that he did it from his girlfriend's aunt's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, just like, well, if they track me down, they'll think it's her. <laughs> <laughs> just think about that. Like some kid, you know, sitting at the kitchen table. What are you doing? Nothing. Right. You know, just, just on a laptop. Just hacking into the just U.S. Taking, military. And yeah. NASA. I mean, I guess he got into everything. He got to every, and the United States was like, give him over. And the one thing he said was, no, because they'll send me to Guantanamo. Mm. I will disappear. And the prime minister's like, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> so she's like, we're not going to send him over. And, so then, I don't, and then it just went away. Yeah, I was going to say. That's the crazy just disappears, right? Like in 2009, this is, this is insane too. Um, this became such a big deal. That David Gilmore of Pink Floyd recorded and released a remake of a Graham Nash song, Chicago, in order to raise awareness for this guy. <laughs> I know. And not being extradited. And then about 2012-ish, the parliament was just like, no, we're not doing it. And everybody went, okay. Well, what the hell? And all of a sudden, everyone was cool with it. But where is he now? And where That's the now? one thing that I could not really find. Well... Like what uh, uh, Proby said, I'd put him to work. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, if I found a hacker who was that goddamn good. You'd rather be on, on your side. I got a big check for you, son. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I got a big check for you. Here's the deal. You don't hack us. You hack them. And you do it for me. I keep your butt safe. Sure. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, full benefits. Apartment. I mean, you're government. You don't have baby. to work from your aunt's house. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> well, think uh, uh, Frank Abagnale, uh, the Catch Me If You Can guy. Right. Uh, kind of similar story. You know, a guy that's uh, really good at something, and they find out his skills, and they put him to work. Yeah. You know, I hey, criminal record gone. And maybe he's yeah. on. Maybe he's on one of the big spaceship aircraft carriers. I oh, would I be. I would be too. Yeah, I'd that, be like, look, yeah. you want me to be quiet? You put me out there. Yeah, yeah. I, want, I want a good view from my window. <laughs> right. Yeah, I can't talk from a bunk over Mars, baby. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. They're not going to look for me there. Nope. <laughs> I, and, and that's another thing. The people who man these vessels. So one thing that always got me, you always get these CEOs from these former companies that come forward later and they say these really like odd things. Oh, I could have got E.T. home. That's a CEO from one of these companies. That's not made up. He said that. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then you've got other people, you know, these special forces guys and these operators of black operations, and they come forward and they're like, everything you think you know, you don't know. They won't say anything more, which I never pressure them. If that's where you want to draw the line, cool. You're doing your country service. But tell me the goddamn spaceships. Are right. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. make me feel yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Where, where are these guys? Well, there was one leaker. He worked, was it the North Pole? He worked in the middle of nowhere on a government facility. He was in charge of like the fire brigade. He had keys to the whole kingdom. And he tried leaking it out that this device that put huge antennas into the water control different things, but its main purpose was to talk to our fleet in the middle of oh, that, was at, that was at the, I, yeah, uh, I remember that interview McMurdo yeah. station something or like something that. like that in, in at the South pole. Yeah. Yeah. And I that we were talking way. with the fleet, mm-hmm. you know, th- we, we should have, we should have dug that up cause that's more evidence. And that kind of, we can, need a device like that. That goes with McKinnon's story. Yeah. Why would we need a device that did something like that unless we unless we had a fleet that could go all the way out to Pluto and we got to send a message. 
and it tracks where they're at and it can track where anything is at. And he said, this makes submarine technology and stealth technology completely irrelevant. Just obsolete. Obsolete. Yeah. Doesn't and matter. See, that's the thing. Like, oh man, when these guys say that, oh, everything you think you know, you don't. <laughs> you know, and, and that it, it doesn't chill me. It just means, okay, maybe things like Solar Warden or what's the new name? Uh, it was Radiant Guardian. Guardian or Radiant Guardian are the reality. Mm -hmm. It's us who are living just bl with our blinders on. Yep. Where, you know, because well, not us. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? Just the enlightened few. And you got to keep that that way. Because what would happen? I don't know. I think that's something that we should explore. We're getting a little long, but that's something I think we should explore. What would happen if the government was suddenly just like, okay, yeah, all this crap that you're carrying around, your phone, your cars, combustion engine, it's all garbage. Right. It's We've got trash. so much cooler stuff. So much cooler. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't be afraid of anyone. There'd be no reason to have a peace treaty. There'd be no reason to hang out and have, you know, Weeks worth of talks to sign papers over land and borders and all this crap. It would make that absolutely irrelevant. Davos but, would be worthless. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> but what if they're like, hey, uh, our galaxy, we live in server 12, rack 5. <laughs> this is our fifth time down this road in this simulation. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and I think the one... When I used to be one of those, you know, fight against the one world government that they're trying to form kind of guys. Right. And the reason why is because if we did something like that, the Constitution's null and void. Right. And that document is my religion. So that would be devastating. The rights and the freedoms of every man, woman and child uh, are up for grabs. By whoever's yeah. the biggest, strongest, and gonna gonna take charge. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, things that are hard to reconcile between different nations on the planet. Where you where and I could, like that. yep, exactly. Where we could sit down and sign a document like a world constitution, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now we got to deal with uh, religious views. This person isn't worth as much in my eyes as this person, and we treat them this way, and I have the freedom to do that under my constitution. So. That's the only thing that I'm against a one world government. Otherwise, I'd be like, yeah, sure. Hell, why not? Why not? Oh, man, if the NWO's watching this, they're, <laughs> well, they're like, of course recruit they are. Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yep. <laughs> no, it's, it's just the idea that it, if you could preserve what was written by our founding fathers in a document for everyone on the face of the planet, I'm for it. But they won't do it. No. You and I both know they won't do it. It'd be about who's in control and who's just eating at the trough. Mm -hmm. That's what it would come down to. Well, Futurama got it right. It's going to just be the U.S. with Nixon in charge, and that's the whole plan. <laughs> <laughs> From a spaceship. Yeah. On that note, I, I spoke a lot. Aaron, I want to give you the last word. Oh, my. I think, you know, every week... We're left going, is it real or isn't it? This one, uh, there's enough interesting evidence out there that it would not surprise me at all. Now, is it what we think it is? Did we build it? Did we take it over? Where did it come from? I don't know. But I also do not believe that we don't have things out there. We're on Mars. I mean, we are. We've, we've got the the landers out there and everything else. We've been to the moon. Fine. Or have we? <laughs> um, but that's the thing is we have enough technology that we can do these things. And you would be foolish to think that it isn't further advanced than what it is it appears being, to be yeah, yeah. portrayed yeah. as. So this one is a yes in my book. Yeah. It's one of those situations where I don't want to believe it, but I do. Cause I do it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You've been watching the Jackalopes Explore.